Shabbat Shalom. Giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Arachach Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great Muslim who were well. Peace, blessings, and salutations. And to the old four-elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, this is another interesting perspective on the topic of the new covenant. And this is what these guys that are not in the spirit is not considering. And I'm I'm actually read this, and this is the new covenant, all right, which uh, Apostle Paul was quoting uh, Jeremiah concerning the new covenant. And um, it's going to deal with um, from verses 7 through verse 10. And this is what we're going to deal with. So I'm going to start at the seventh verse. And it says, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So we know off top the contract, everything contained in the contract. You know, the fact that, you know, the Lord gave us a, a set of rules, instructions, guidelines. He gave us uh, moral, civil laws, ceremonial laws, judgments, you know, prescribed for each law. And there was no fault with any of it. We know that the most size is, is, is uh, judgments are, are righteous. Right. So there was no fault in the law, the judgments, the statutes, none of that. So who was the problem that the Lord had to tweak or make changes to the original contract? Let's keep going. It says for finding fault with them. Who was them? Israel, the people. So Israel was the people that were at fault. It wasn't the contract, neither the things contained in the contract that was uh, faulty. It was the people who could not hold their end of the contract, which resulted in ramifications, penalties, consequences. And what were those? The curses, right? It says, for finding fault with them, ye say, if, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the, hand, out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Right? Soon as after... The, the, the covenant was made Jake still Deviated They, they and, and the Lord saw right then and there How faulty and corrupted His people were That corruptible nature Fall into the flesh The lust of the flesh Jake rising up to play Worshipping golden calves Quick to uh, worship idols And the Lord had to turn his back Multiple times So obviously we were the problem It says For this is the covenant that I will make With the house of Israel after those days saith the Lord I will put my laws into their mind And write them in their hearts And they will be to me, I will be to them a God And they shall be to me a people Now just, just Like play, pay close attention to that how the Lord basically says that he's going to put it into your mind, right? Now, you know who would make this covenant faulty? Even though it's it, the Lord said that um, even the old covenant was, was uh, faultless. There was nothing wrong with the old covenant. But what would make this new covenant faulty? Is if he left his people with the same corruptible nature that caused them to not be able to uphold the covenant in the first place. This is why he had to make a new one. Because under our corruptible nature that we naturally have in these fleshly bodies, we would not be able to hold to it. We would not be able to keep it. This is what these guys are not understanding. This is what they're not getting. This is why we say we're not under the new covenant yet. 
We have to, we, we're under grace until that uh, moment, until that point. According to the new covenant, it's going to be in us. It's going to be in our mind. But it would be faulty if I still have to have, I have to entertain sinful thoughts. Then I'm going against the law in my mind. And Apostle Paul, he literally said that he have a law in his members working against the law of his mind. Let's get that. I don't think they consider this. This is the same Apostle Paul who wrote the book of Hebrews. So was Apostle Paul under the Holy? Was he under the uh, the new covenant? If he was under the new covenant, he's also saying this. And this would actually make the new covenant faulty. Romans 7. And I'm going to start at. Uh, hmm. I'm going to start at verse 14. It says, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Right. We still go off. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. But according to the uh, New Covenant, the laws is, and, and statutes and judgments are supposed to be in you. But yet, you got something that's contradicting that in your mind. Then that would, that would be a, a, a faulty covenant. You telling me that the Lord died and finalize the contract the covenant with his blood by allowing us to still uh, uh inherit the sinful nature that we naturally have no this is why we he, his his death his sacrifice gave us that grace so that the lord will have mercy on us and he doesn't put us to death like he did under the old covenant but that we would be under grace and the lord would give us a down payment of his spirit until he changes us out of these sinful bodies. But until then, we're still under these chains of darkness. We're still under the bondage of uh, corruption. Still having to fight that fight, man. How is it that under the new covenant, we're still battling? Why do we still have to fight? If we're going to be perfect and we're going to serve him righteously in, in, in perfection and we're going to basically not sin, we're not going to have to uh, teach our people to know the Lord to know his ways, how, how are we, why are we doing all this? Why are we still fighting temptation in these, in these bodies under the new covenant? That would make the new covenant faulty. So you're calling the Most High a liar. Verse 17, it says, now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is my, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. All right, which this nature was inherited going back to the garden under Adam. You see? This is why Yahweh Shai had to die, you know, to 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 um to basically counter that. But it but the effects of it started with him entering into that contract by his blood. Where now he he no longer has he he's he's not in 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 the um the nature of sinful flesh anymore. He's he he's he's a uh a, a celestial being now. In the heavens. And he's coming and he's waiting to come back to change us into that same glory. But right now we grown being under these uh filthy bodies, man. That's subject to sin. Sin dwell within all of us. It says, I I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the most high after the inward man. But I see another law in my members 
warring against the law of my mind. So you having this constant battle. You want you you're trying to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth, but then your sinful nature, according to the flesh, tries to uh, intervene. And as long as you're in the flesh, it it happens to you. It's going to happen. According to the new covenant, that wouldn't be so. You would just literally be doing what's pleasing unto the Heavenly Father nonstop. He will put it into your mind. You won't have to worry about the law of your members intervening. It says, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, the bondage of corruption. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Why is Apostle Paul saying these things while under the new covenant? When according to the new covenant, the Lord was going to put his, his laws in your inward parts and write them in your, in, in your heart. Come on, man. Are you telling me that we're still going to serve sin even under the new covenant? You're making the most high a liar. It says, I thank the most. It says, uh, verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of, of this death? This is why we're waiting for that, re that redemption. All right. That we become the sons of God and the Lord uh, take us out of these uh, corruptible bodies and, and give us those uh, incorruptible. All right. So that we can stop being mortals and become immortals again. All right, that's what we're waiting on. It says, I thank the Most High through Yahweh Shammashiach, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of the Most High, but with the, with the flesh, the law of sin. And that's faulty. That's faulty, man. If, 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 if this applies to the Holy, um, the, it's like the New Covenant. If this is going on within the New Covenant, then... You know, what's the purpose? Because we struggle with it. Even going back to when the Lord first made the covenant with us, where we tried to keep the law, but then we kept going off. We kept falling to our flesh. Now, what Apostle Paul is speaking of. Prophet Ezra also learned of all right from from the angel all right going back to what happened in the beginning all right and this is uh second Ezra 3 and i'm gonna start at verse um i'm gonna start at I might as well start at like verse four. It says, O Lord, who bearest rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth and that thyself alone and commandest the people and gavest a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands and did breathe into him the breath of life. All right, that which is what the the inspiration of the Most High. He put his spirit into Adam. And he was made living before thee. And thou leadest him into paradise. All right. In Eden, I done paradise. All right. Where you had the tree of life. All right. Which is uh, the knowledge of, of the law, statutes, commandments. Right. And that was all he knew. Which was, you know, when he was in that state of just knowing the law, statutes, commandments, the, the way of righteousness of the Most High, he was immortal. Which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. All right. Uh, hearkening unto Eve after she fell by being beguiled by the serpent. All right. Learning from the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right. And that's where, you know, the Lord had to give us the sentence of death. That was the penalty. And immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations of whom came nations 
tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. And, and we, guess what? We inherited that. That's why we all die to this day. It says, and every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. Right? And again, in process of time, thou brought us the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyest them. And it came to pass in every, in every of them that as death was to Adam, so was the flood to these. Nevertheless, one of them thou leftest Named Noah, namely Noah, with this household of whom came all righteous men. And it happened that when they dwelt upon the earth, began to multiply and had gotten them many children and were a great people. They began again to be more ungodly than the first. So that nature still was there. The corruptible nature of being in the human flesh. They went back to more idolatry. All right. More uh, adultery. All right, more uh, uh, murders, violence, so on and so forth. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou shewest thy will. And made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that he would, he would as never forsake his seed. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and, un and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob... Thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. And it came to pass that when thou leadest his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai and the bowing of the bowing the heavens and did a set fast the earth, moved this the whole world and made us the depths of tremble and, tr and troublest the men of that age. And thy glory went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold that thou mightest, thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. All right. So this is when the Lord appeared to us, his glory. All right. The, the quake happened. All right. He, uh, you know, came upon that mountain. His glory, you know, was, was bright and it burned the mountain up. Right. We went through. You know, different conditions in the wilderness, like that whole history, right? And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. So the Lord, he didn't take away from them that wicked heart. All right? Even though the Lord made a covenant with us, that wicked heart was still there. All right. When he made that that old covenant with us through Moses, we still had that wicked heart. That was the fault that he uh, found. It was in us and it was not in the law. Or not in the contract. OK, it was us. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. You're born of uh, Adam. I'm born of Adam. We all are born of Adam. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. And the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. I think they forgot this part. This came coexist happening while simultaneously being under the new covenant. Unless you're saying that this is, uh, you know, this was in the past. All right. Uh, we no longer have, you know, we, we no longer fall short to the flesh. You know, we don't have that um, malignity uh, 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 root. Right here, it says that the infirmity was made permanent. The infirmity is what? The, the the, basically the demon Okay The corruptible nature Well we sin And then when we sin What happens we get afflicted in the flesh We get sick we groan We get uh, infirmities diseases We you know we, we have to feel pain 
And then eventually we have to die. All right. Now I'm curious to see what uh what this say in the uh, on another translation. Let's go to uh Bible Gateway. We'll go down to the G and T. Second Ezra three. Hold up. All right, let me uh, try this then. All right, second edge is three, and we're going to jump down to. I'm going to uh, read 20. I'm going to read. Um, 20 and it says actually uh i guess i'll start at 17 it says you rescued the descendants of jacob from egypt and led them to mount sinai there you bent down the sky shook the earth moved the world made the waters beneath the earth tremble and brought disorder to the universe the dazzling light of your presence passed through the four gates of fire earthquake wind and frost and in order to give the law and its commandments to Jacob's descendants, the people of Israel. Yet you did not remove their evil impulse, but let your law guide their lives. So yeah, we have that corruptible nature, that evil impulse that's naturally rooted in our bodies. But yet we still had to use the law to navigate. All right, to, 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 to govern. But it did not stop our corruptible nature. The new covenant is the Lord's going to stop. He's going to put it into that corruptible nature. And that's going to happen when we, the Lord give us the new bodies. Then we will be able to keep the law perfectly. With no interruption, no temptation, no law of our members warned against the, uh, the law of our mind. Get it through your heads, man. It says the first man, Adam, weighed down with an evil impulse, sinned and was defeated. And the same was true of all of his descendants. So the disease became permanent. And although the law was in the hearts of the people, so also was the root of evil. So, yeah, we the law was in our hearts at, at, at some point. We had to meditate on our law. We had to teach the law to our children and their in, in their children. You know, we had to wear the um the, the, the frontlets, the um. The, the, the fringes, the uh, um, the phylacteries around the arm to remind us of the law. But we still had that evil root in us. But according to the new covenant, the Lord's going to take that that part of it out of there. So that we can't fall anymore. It says that is why what was good passed away while that was evil continued. All right. And it never stopped. That, that really never changed. Because look at our people today. They're they're even worse now. All right. So this is why we have to, you know, wait for our Lord to come and redeem us. OK. So this is what the Lord found fault with. He found fault with us. This is why he had to make that new covenant. And if you're going to say that, oh, well, we have the Holy Spirit now. Well, Apostle Paul had the Holy Spirit. And he acknowledged that he still was a, with sin dwelt in him. King David, he, he prayed that the Lord take not the Holy Spirit from him. Yet he committed uh, a sin. Sins under death. So that, that would make the new covenant faulty if we're still liable to go off and sin under the new covenant. 
All right. So, um, oh, and another thing, they say that the Holy Spirit is uh, the new covenant, right? So, if that's the new covenant, then you're telling me that the, the prophets are old, the men who actually had the Holy Spirit on them, you're saying that they entered it, they, they were in the new covenant before the new covenant was even established? You're saying while we were still under the old covenant, the prophets that had the Holy Spirit, they were, in the, they were under the new covenant already? Because I can demonstrate when the Holy Spirit came down upon the men, even in the Old Testament. Let's go to Numbers 11. This is Numbers 11. Is 16 and uh, 17, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it, not thyself alone. All right, so he's going to actually put the spirit upon these uh, elders. Right? Now let's jump down. In verse, uh, this is verse 20. 23 it says and the Lord said unto Moses is the Lord's hand wax short thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not and Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle and the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto them and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied and did not cease. That was the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Spirit is what gives the utterance. So these men, they were prophesying in the Spirit. You, In order to, to prophesy, the Holy Spirit got to be within you. It got to be upon you. All right? So they were, they, I, I guess, uh, these 70 men, they were in the New Covenant. Right. Let's go to. Let's deal with Moses. Isaiah 63. And verse. Uh, I'll start at verse eight. It says, for he says, surely there are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. And all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the, out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? So the Lord did what? The Lord put his Holy Spirit within Moses to lead Israel as a shepherd, all right, out of the hand of the enemy, out of Egypt. When he performed all those miracles, that was the, the power of the, of the Spirit. That's literally what the Holy Spirit is, the power of the Spirit of the Most High. And it works through men. At that time, he was using Moses. So the Holy Spirit was on. So Moses was in the new covenant. <laughs> it says that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble as a beast goeth down into the valley. The spirit of the Lord caused him to rest 
So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. So you had the 70 elders and now you got Moses. They had the Holy Spirit. Let's deal with uh, Saul, who y'all trying to uh, project on us <laughs> that we are, right? So they're the, they're the, they're the house of uh, David and we're the house of Saul, even though we're the ones being pursued. All right, so let, let's uh, let's get First Samuel ten. Did the Holy Spirit ever uh, come upon uh, King Saul? First Samuel ten and one it says, then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, "It is not because the Lord have anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. When thou art departed from me today." Then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zilzah, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek are, are found, and lo, thy father have left the care of the asses and sorroweth for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? So one of the first things that he that he did, all right, was he anointed, he got anointed, right? Saul got anointed. All right, by the prophet Samuel. And we know in the spirit, you know, spiritually, uh, when you have the Holy Spirit, that's considered an ointment. That's the unction. And you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Unction is basically a, a, a ointment or an a, a anointing. All right. Which is a portion of the Holy Spirit. All right. Now, let me uh, jump down real quick. Verse, uh, let me just keep reading. It says, when thou art departed from me today, then thou, oh, I read that already. Verse three, then thou shalt go on forward from thence and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of the Mosai, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou art come to tither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them. And they shall prophesy and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned unto another man. So the Holy Spirit was going to come upon Saul once he saw them. And he was going to be a part of that company of prophets. It says, and let it be when these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as occasion serve thee for the most eyes with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice Sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and shew thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, the Mosai gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came tither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and a spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. You see that? The spirit came upon him. So is this when he entered into the new covenant? And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, what is this that is come unto the son of Kish? And saw also among the prophets and one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? Therefore, it became a proverb It saw also among the prophets. All right, because the spirit came upon him. All right, but wh wh what happened? He still had that, that evil root of malignity, that evil impulse. Where later on, he became envious. That's according to the flesh. All right, he was envious against King David. That evil eye started to kick in, that, which is the curse. That eye shall be evil towards thy brother. <laughs> Then that's when, you know, he started to change. 
Then he did, he he just stopped. He he didn't follow a simple instruction that the Lord gave him when he commanded him to go and and take out uh, Agag, the Amalekite, and all the Amalekites. And that's when the that was when the Lord finally took the spirit from him and sent them an evil spirit. So he entered into the new covenant, but then he 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 he. he pretty much fell to evil and then the Lord took the spirit from him. So I guess he entered into the new covenant, he went off and then the Lord led him out of the uh, new covenant, the new agreement. Y'all know how silly this is, man. And this is what prompt, this is part of what prompted King David to, to pray to the Lord, you know, Hey, cast me not out of your presence, neither take the Holy spirit from me. All right, showing you that David had the spirit. That's why he was he prophesied in his psalms. He was a prophet because he had the the spirit was rested upon him, but he also was a man, a mortal man. All right, he was in the flesh. He fell to the flesh. Okay, he committed adultery. You telling me that King David was in the new covenant? No, the Lord had to make a covenant based on what happened. The Lord had to. Uh, have mercy upon him based on the promise that he made concerning um, the seed and that his seed was going to be the one that was going to be raised to sit upon the throne he was going to be the one that was going to uh, build up the uh, the temple because he was going to be pure enough to uh, build the temple before he fell to his flesh King Solomon Okay, and I can keep going. All right, you even had uh, Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel had the uh, the spirit on him. I guess uh, Zerubbabel was also in the new covenant too. Zechariah four, and verse uh, five it says, "Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be?" And I said, "No, my lord." Then he answered. And spoke, spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power. All right, so this, what, I, what I'm going to have you do by building up this temple has, is not going to have anything to do with, you know, how clever you are, how smart you are, or how much strength you got, or the number of people you have with you. But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You see? So it was going to be the, the, the spirit that was going to be upon him. That was going to uh, lead him and guide him into uh, building up the temple. And hey, the spirit came upon uh, Peter. The, the spirit was always on Peter. This is how we know that this is that same spirit. The Lord gave Peter the charge over the church. He was going to be that, uh, that foundation. He was going to lay that foundation down. Peter, thou art thou rock. That the church shall be um, built upon or established upon. And the gates of hell will not uh, prevail against it. It says, who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it. And in the spirit, you know, the, the, the temple of the church now. And right now, we're, what, what are we up under? We're under grace. Are you following me? For you, you, you reprobates, man. All right. So it was going to be the spirit that was going to be upon him. All right. To lay the foundation of, of, of the temple. This, the new covenant was not established yet. Unless y'all saying that the new covenant was already Fulfilled in the Old Covenant, uh, under in the Old Testament. You dudes, you, you, you're bugging out, man. You're waxing worse and worse. All right? And, you, and we ain't going to keep doing this tit for tat thing where we're going to keep making videos back and forth. Really, this is for the elect. We, you know, we, we do these videos to edify those who are watching and are sincere. All right? And the elect, they're not going to be deceived, man. 
All right. Only the reprobates, all the turncoats, all the people that ain't that, that, that ain't right, who are not chosen, they're going to fall for whatever. They're going to be tossed to and fro. All right. But this shows you right here that the spirit was always around. So how could you say that the new covenant is the Holy Spirit? Uh, Micah, uh, was it three? Yeah, Micah 3, verse 8. This is Micah. It says, But truly I am full of the power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of judgment, and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. All right? By the, by the, the, the Spirit of, of the power of the Most High. All right? So, I mean, I, I can keep going, but you know, I think the point was made. All right. These dudes, they're 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 totally uh bugging out, man. And this is the last video I'm gonna do in response to the these clowns in, in, in this particular subject. All right. We can't simply be under the new covenant, but also at the same time, we still are in the flesh, we're still uh corruptible. All right, when 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 the Lord comes back. All right, which is going to be the day of doom. That's when it's going to be the beginning of immortality. All right. And uh, 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 corruption. Let's get that in a second. Uh, second Ezra seven. And verse. Um, yeah, 41 down to 45, 40. Shit, you, you could just keep reading all the way down from there. But uh, this is our second Ezra 7 verse 41. It says, even so now seeing corruption is growing up and wickedness increased and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not be so now also? Okay, your wickedness increased. It's not going to, you're not going to be under the new covenant and wickedness is going to be increasing. He answered me and said, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past. Intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. This is when the new covenant is going to be uh, 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 fulfilled. When that's fulfilled, when the Lord programs us with his law, statutes, commandments, then that's when immor uh, immortality is going to uh, come in. That's when intemperance is going to be at an end. That's when infidelity is going to be cut off. We're not going to uh, uh, worship other gods ever again. Righteousness has grown and truth has sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten a victory. I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam or else when it was given him to have restrained him from sinning for what profit is it for a man now in his present time to live in heaviness and after death look to look for punishment O thou Adam what hast thou done for though it was thou that sin thou art not fallen alone but we all that come of thee and that's why you know we were we were known as the we were the Nephilim all right, we were the fallen ones. I have said that you are gods and you are all sons of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Okay, but we were we were made subject to this vanity, not willingly. But but to him, he subject he subjected us to the same in hope. The hope of what that we're going to be redeemed. From these corruptible bodies unto the incorruptible uh, body. All right. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring it, that bring death? Okay. So it's gonna be this way up until Yahweh Shai comes back, but we have to fight that fight, you know. We have to, this is the condition of the battle. 
which man that is upon the, born upon the earth shall fight. All right. So, yeah, man. I think that I mean we you could read this whole finish the rest of this chapter, man. It it, it goes into it perfectly. All right. So right now we we're, we're under uh, grace, that so the Lord can have mercy upon us. If He didn't give us this grace, we'd all be done. So the Lord gave us that grace. All right, that that we may enter into us a, a safe place of mercy in the eyes of the Most High, so that He will spare us. And under that, under the time of that grace, under that liberty, we're to rehearse the righteous acts, man. Practice the law, meditate on it, learn, understand the, the, the spiritual aspect of the law, and not just the carnal side, like the wicked scribes and Pharisees. All right. So, yeah, man, that, that that's that's pretty much the lesson, and I I, I wanted to. You know, there was just another perspective to, to, to consider. All right. The Lord is not going to make a new covenant and it's going to be a, a, a faultless covenant based on we keeping a law perfectly. The law is in our minds and we're going to practice and do them. But yet we're going to have a law in our in our uh, members warned against the law of our mind. Come on, man. That's not going to happen in the, under the new covenant. We're not going to entertain mm -hmm. sinful thoughts. Right now, we still that still happens. And if you say if you if, and if you uh, deny that, you're a liar, complete liar. So you can make your 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 your, your ten videos and, and and get on fire, you know, to 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 continue to go back and forth. Right, but but you ain't gonna be on fire to to, to preach Yahweh Shai's return, Esau's uh world uh, coming to an end. All right, the time of Jacob's trouble. You ain't on fire to to, to do that though. It is what it is. I'm gonna give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai to the next lesson. Shalom.